Okay, it seems we are live. Uh, so today we're going to have a look at an Atari 800 keyboard Mylar fix. <coughs> and if luck's on my side, this one isn't going to take long. So let's get straight into it. This was sent in by a forum member, an Atari Edge forum member. And it's a keyboard I haven't seen before this particular type. I'm just going to move this camera a little bit. Uh, it appears to be more or less identical to the keyboard on a, on a 1200XL. So we did, well, we did one of those the other day. So hopefully it's going to be more of the same. It seems like it's the contacts where the Mylar meets the PCB so we're going to clean them up and I've got an 800 on hand and we'll pop the keyboard in there when we're done and hopefully it'll work I'm just going to take the screws out let's open the chat on the off chance there's anybody here So this is a Mitsumi keyboard. They always seem to make the best keyboards for the Atari. Um, I think... I'm not sure what keyboard's in mind, but... Um, might be a high tech. Is there a hidden screw here that I'm not seeing? Maybe. Is there a screw under this? Come on, is there a little screw? Is there little s another little screw I can't see? Well, I bet there is. I'm trying to feel around and see if there's another screw. Pixel Mischief from Atari Age is in the house. Hello, Daniel. Uh, do these things have other screws in them and I can't see? Seems to be. Seems to be one right at the back. I sort of imagine there would be, but this doesn't look like it's been peeled off. Ever. Ah, there it is. I've found you. trying to hide there we go hmm this is uh, this looks this just looks so much smaller than the unless it's an optical illusion it looks so much smaller than the keyboard on the mylar on the 1200XL is that because the keyboard on the 1200XL doesn't have the cutouts on the PCB maybe that's it perhaps that's what it is I'm just gonna pop that down there where it definitely can't fall off this has helpfully been removed already by the owner which is great because it saves me warming it up the um, for anybody who was watching the other night <coughs> that ill-advised stream that I did when what was I doing oh yeah testing the uno carts Any, anybody was watching that I did find that SD card I did find it eventually and it was on the floor um, there it is it was on the floor and the not only 
I can't remember which one it was now because they all look the same. A little bit of flux on there. Not only did the 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 Uno cart that didn't work that was embarrassing. But the Uno cart that didn't work, what I did the next day off stream was I removed the I removed the MCU completely and reattached it and that fixed it. So I don't know what was wrong with it. I think when I look closely at it the alignment was just a little bit off. Just a little bit off. So it looked good enough to the naked eye, but there must have been a there must have been a short that that, that you just couldn't see. Even with high resolution photos. And I haven't got the little toy eBay microscope that I ordered yet. That hasn't turned up yet, but that should be interesting. I suppose I'll review that or something. When it turns up, if it turns up. It's another one of those ships from the UK products that takes two weeks to arrive because it's coming from China. Drop shipped. But what can you do? And still no radio mic. So I've got this contraption, this cheap microphone, headphone, headset on. So I'll probably just stay on camera one until I get the radio mic. And another reason is that I've I've got the scruffs on today because I've been called upon to intervene in tidying up my stepdaughter's flat again. This comes round this comes round every every year or two. Let's have a look for the small screwdrivers. Yeah, this... I just can't put them back in the drawer. Oh, there they are. This comes around every year or so. As the mic lead tries to garrot me again. Hopefully I'm not being indiscreet by saying that it's reminiscent of the the TV show Hoarders. There we go. So the main thing that needed doing here was removal of the crappy adhesive layer between the mylar and the PCB and then we're going to get rid of this crap. the rest of the mylar looks in decent shape but we'll see when we tr test it but yeah the I don't get young people listen to me young people wasn't so long ago when I was a young person but I just I just can't imagine how anybody could live like that and I mean Plenty of people are messy. Old school Atari, but you can do my daughter's bedroom too. <laughs> uh, well, I've had plenty of practice at cleaning. I mean, I'm disinclined to to actually do it, but um, I mean, what's the option? The option is that she gets kicked out of a flat. That's not a very good option. Because she's only going to make a mess of somewhere else. I mean, when she lived here, this is the room actually that. It's a bomb site. Yeah, that's how I would describe it. In fact, I used those very words yesterday when I went over. I said it looked like there's been an explosion. Um, but there's a difference between mess. Somebody who's messy and somebody who is dirty you know and this this is erring on the dirty side I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because you, well it's pretty sickening 
but <laughs> um, I mean, I've got a friend um, who I used to work with. Um, he was a volunteer for me when I was teaching computers to retired people and he's got he's a hoarder no doubt about it he's a hoarder but he's not dirty I mean the house is just you the stuff all over the place you know and you just can't seem to get to grips with it it's it's he's become so overwhelmed by it that he doesn't know where to start and if he does tidy it up it, it quickly just because of his habits is of, of acquiring goods it quickly goes back into the same condition so it's sort of a habit it's just a, it's, it's a kind of a habit forming thing this acquisition of goods that you, that you don't have adequate storage space for but when when it's because I'll go to his house and I'll have a cup of tea no problem at all put the kettle on and I'll have a you know I'll have a slice of toast I'll have a cup of tea N no problem I don't worry about you know contracting any germs so I've scraped away the adhesive the remnants of the adhesive between these gold contacts and now I'm just getting the rest of the adhesive off the top with some acetone I've got to get some isopropyl as well that would be better it's not a big problem in this uh, case but every now and again there's something that you want to clean that pure acetone is going to melt which is not really what you want but yeah I yeah I don't have a I have no problem having a cup of tea at his house but um, this is just the place the place I've got to tidy up now is just a different um, a completely different story and I can't understand it because if, if there's one person living in a house with one cat and the, these people have always got a pet for some reason they always have a pet which just compounds the situation it's just ten times worse when you've got an animal as well because and I don't blame the animal um, because the animal needs uh, needs segregated areas the animal needs to clearly understand where its toilet is where it gets fed if it has an accident it needs to be cleaned up straight away so that the smell doesn't linger and make the animal think that that's its toilet and if you don't do those things chaos ensues uh, but it's not difficult I mean, I mean we've got five cats here that's right we've got five cats and yeah they make a mess but they know they know what where the toilet is and they know that I prefer them to go and do it outside and if they have an accident it's dealt with straight away I mean I will pulverize the floor with uh, bleach but I mean it doesn't take long somebody throws up on the floor in the kitchen it takes five minutes to clear it up it's not it's not difficult so now I've turned the tender we've cleaned that up now so uh, I'll give you a look at that I'll probably give this whole board a little clean because it's a little bit smudged but that looks nice and clean nice and clean theme for the day by the look of it so now I've turned attention to this the contacts on the mylar itself and that the black residue is the other conductive traces and you can see they're all worn away in the middle so I, I don't understand what that adhesive strip this thing it 
I mean, did it have... I don't know what the idea of this was. It's not even needed. But it seems when it when it starts to degrade, all it does is lift... lift. That's not going to focus, is it? Because you can see through it. All it does is lift the mylar off the PCB. So you get no contact. So Anyway. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is mix some paint. We mix some paint. And this is the last of the paint, more or less. And where's the paint? I got the paint. And I put it somewhere where, where I could easily get to it. And now it's disappeared. Now oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. Sounds like a completely different channel. Ow! Oof. Okay, so exactly the same thing we did the other day. Where did I put the paintbrush? Ah, where did I put the paintbrush? So I thought I had everything prepared. But after a while you get... Um, I start to get a little bit resentful of people who... Uh, just ignore a problem. Um, make light of a problem. A domestic problem. Like being able to... Being unable to clean clean up after yourself. Um, until the point that it reaches a crisis. Safe in the knowledge that... Someone... In this case, me is going to go around and fix things when when they get beyond, uh, you know, when they become completely intolerable. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating, but what can you do? What can you do? Yeah, this paint's just about finished. It's just about finished. So I have to get online and order some more. It's about five quid a file. I think it was inlaid with gold, not silver. Okay, so hopefully this will be as smooth as the 1200XL keyboard from the other day. Smooth, that's what we want. So, yeah, a little bit later on, I'm gonna go and unblock the sink. So, you can imagine how excited I am. I got some fun lined up this afternoon. <laughs> I'm keep having to shake this paint up because it's all the conductive materials fall into the bottom of the little file. Oh, there I've got my hand. So with these U Uno carts anyway, the as I said, I, I took the MCU off I put it back on again and it was it's a little bit it's a, well it's a lot easier with this hot air station I love the hot air station because not only did it allow me to get the the MCU off in the first place which I wouldn't have been able to do previously but when I put it back on and soldered it properly I still wasn't a hundred percent happy with the alignment there was something about that board where the damn chip just did not want to go on right. So I heated it up again uh, with the hot air and just a little nudge 
a little nudge with the tweezers and it just floated into position. It was a beautiful thing to see. It was beautiful. And then finally, because one of the MCUs that I ordered had mangled legs on one side, must have got bumped during packaging or something, so that, that was a that went in the bin. So I stole I still got the prototype board that Robin made me. So what I actually did for now, just for as a temporary measure, the new PCB that lacked an MCU because the MCU is in the bin, I stole the MCU from the prototype and fitted it to board number 10. Well, it looks pretty good. Fitted it to board number 10 and uh, that was the last one of the batch and that one it came out really really nicely. Probably the best looking one of the lot. So I'm uh, I'm on my game as far as Uno Carts is concerned. Are concerned. I'm giving my best. So the next lot should be a breeze, hopefully. Because I wouldn't tackle any more of the, the. You know, you're only as good as your last project, <coughs> sort of thing. So I would have been disinclined if something had gone wrong here. I would have been disinclined to repeat the repeat the process. But yeah, we got ten working boards, which I'm happy about. Now I'm going to keep keep the tenth one. I think probably, and then. There's about another 21 people on Atari Age who want these things, so I'm going to be busy. Yeah, it looks nice, so we're now we're going to test it. What's funny about girls, I hear it's a, every time I talk about mess, messy stepdaughter, someone says that their daughter is exactly the same so it must be a, it's almost a universal thing but by degrees definitely by degrees you know messes are definitely uh, messes are a very subjective thing or chaos and dirt a completely subjective thing Okay, I'll pop that on there like, does that go that way? Yeah, uh, yeah it must. <laughs> where's the, where's the locating pegs? Well, yeah, it's got to go that way, but where are the pegs? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See the pegs. Just feel around. Come on. Hmm. Ah, there we go. And it's moved. Excellent. We'll try that again. We're going to try that again. What I might do, um, I'm thinking about it, I don't know. I don't, the, you see these YouTube channels where they, they have giveaways and stuff as just shameless attempts to get more subscribers. But we'll see how things go. I might do a, I may even do a giveaway at one point. 
see how things go. I've got a lot of stuff to get rid of here, some of which I want to sell. Because I'm currently I'm rearranging the room. So I've got a third desk to come in here. So we've got a stack of cardboard boxes with <coughs> excuse me. Stack of cardboard <laughs> boxes. Oh dear. At the other end of the room we've got uh keyboards, XL keyboards, XE keyboards, Mylars, XL cases, dead motherboards, working motherboards, donor boards, uh cassette drives, disk drives, all kinds of junk. And a stack of boxes, empty boxes with bubble wrap and stuff in them. It's just getting completely out of hand, so I need to rationalise this place. Right. Uh, how about we move these screws? I haven't put all the screws in yet. I never do. Until I know it works. So we're going to have to... Oh, what are going to do here? Yeah. Dismantle this, which is mine. So we can get the keyboard out. Oh. Shame I have to dismantle this because I hate taking the thing apart. It's got an incognito in it with some very carefully rooted cabling runs. But they, sh oh, they shouldn't come apart when I take it to bits. Let's see. How long have we been? <coughs> yeah, I've had a cough ever since I went into that flat yesterday. I swear to God. It's a biohazard. That's what it is. It's a biohazard. I've got a... One of those face masks. You know the filter on it? I'm seriously considering wearing that. Right. Ugh. Come on. Ah. No, what's stopping this from opening? Perhaps I can use the camera to see what I'm doing. That could work. No, that couldn't work. Uh. Come on. Uh. Oh, right. That's it. So the lid sensor on this thing is uh, deactivated. No, I hope this goes on this way. I'm gonna take a punt that it does. <coughs> so yeah, the lid sensor is deactivated, so I don't need the lid on this to get it working. What I do need is my Easy Cap Capture card. Okay, let's power up. This cable is... This cable's got a break in it. There's definitely a break in this cable. So there's something else I need to fix. Come on. Come on. Hmm. I can't keep my finger on there the whole time. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, we got some keys. Oh, I love easy stuff. I love easy stuff.
stay there, damn it. Uh, oh shit, I can't do that, can I? I'll probably put the keyboard on top of that cable. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's continue with these tests. Control and various characters and um, shift numbers and tab and escape and return. Yeah, this works. Okay. I'm happy with that. I think the um you see that that LED is still glowing even though this is turned off. I've got the wrong resistor on there, I think. Or something's not right. That glows for about a minute after I turn it off. Is that normal? Does anybody know? Probably a high power, high brightness L LED, but still. These little bits oh, have left themselves on the legs. Oh, there, wow. These left themselves on the legs of the keyboard connector. I like little push in inserts. I thought it was totally destroyed at first, but it's not. They're like little plugs. See what I mean? I don't know if they've got any. Do they go in either way? Yeah. So they push in. Push in the end. Like that. See? So it would be nice when we put them back. So, oh, I thought I had, I thought I'd just given myself extra work there for a minute. Okay. Oh, I didn't want to do that, did I? Let's put that to one side. In fact, we might as well put it back together. Plug the keyboard in. Dumbass. Right, that's it. Put the rest of the screws in the keyboard and then we are done. And it's sync time. It's sync plunger time. Back where 
I found it. Ah. Alright, press these screws in. So once these Uno carts are out of the way, this batch, the next thing that might be interesting is a kind of a monster 800XL with ultimate one megabyte VBXE Rapidus Adaptus which is the Rapidus adapter for the XL or well, it sounds like a disease I suppose Rapidus could be a disease as well Adaptus um, and Stereo Pokey and Stereo Audio and that has the potential to go all sorts of ways I think it's going to go smoothly certainly until the ultimate one megabytes in there well, it depends very much which one I put in first if I put the ultimate one megabyte in it's going to be smooth if I put the repeaters in it'll be smooth but when they're both in together I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen most of the repeaters problems seem to have been fixed but the the device turned up with a cap <coughs> and some bits of wire and stuff which uh, I think meant to flatten out noise in the uh, external select line I'll go and get it actually so there we go that is one working 800 keyboard I don't know how, that, how long did that take about half an hour oh, that's done let's have a look in this box of stuff Do, 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 do. I'm going to scribble that out before I forget. Oh. Okay, so we've got, aside from the other things I mentioned, we've got this. that's going to go smoothly so that's going in now we've got here we've got um, a what's that a resistor and a cap which I can't read uh, but that Little re little modifications referenced on the uh, Tar Age forum, so I'll have a look at that. And the adapters, <coughs> in fact, I should. Oh. How does this work? So this goes in the CPU socket on the XL. Um. What the... Where... Ah... Oh, I've got you. Alright, I think I just figured out what this is. I 
So this goes in the CPU socket. Imagine the front of the computer is here. This goes in the CPU socket. This goes in the OS ROM socket. And the either the OS ROM or the OS ROM adapter on the Ultimate One Megabyte goes into there. And this is where the repeater sits. So the CPU sits in there. So the CPU is on a ribbon cable right over the other side of the machine. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder how that's going to work out. Well, it should be fine, but uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not an expert on high-speed electronics, so hmm. It's going to be. It's going to be interesting. And was there a... Did... Uh, oh! Did he give me a ribbon cable for all this? Did he give me a ribbon cable for this? I hope so! Yes, is it? So a ribbon cable. Um, I'm going to go on a limb and think that pin one's red. So I guess the ribbon cable goes on there like that, and the ribbon cable pin one goes on there like that. Wow, this this is going to be incredible. Hmm. Whew. This is going to be fun. So this is what we've got to look forward to next. Okay, so I'm going to put this stuff away for now. And the next... Probably the next video... Or the next but one... We're going to be installing all this crap into a machine. So there you have it, that is one fixed Atari 800 Mitsumi keyboard. I hope you enjoy it. I am off to find my sink plunger, rubber gloves, breathing apparatus and biohazard suit. And if I survive all that, I will see you next time. So bye bye for now.